Cool. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. It's episode 695 of The O Show. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe on our YouTube channel at Jack O'Hara TV. We are now presented by O Snap Active Lifestyle. I don't know if you've ever had one of these, Dom. No, no, what is so, it? So, O Snap Active Lifestyle. Can I have one right uh, now? Snap it, squeeze it, share it. Have you had any energy drinks today? Oh, dude, I've had probably 29 ounces of coffee. So Then I will, I'll give you this for later. Okay, okay. But seriously, so I, I want to show the people. Oh, snap. This is the exp uh, espresso flavor uh, surge packet. Have one of these bad boys and you'll be lit up for the rest of the day. I Can took, I try it right now? I took Just one a, of these. Or... I, I took one of these an hour ago when I parked my car immediately thought I was having a panic attack and I had to, I was running up oh, and down really? the stairs for 15 okay, minutes. Maybe, maybe I will save it for later because I'll be all jittery on the phone. And it works. Time. It hits you as soon as it hits your system. Yeah. It's amazing. Thanks so much it. to uh, John and Najla Malat for setting this up with Osnap Osho, Osnap Active Lifestyle. Head on over to osnap.com slash Jack O'Hara uh, to try your free packets. Become an ambassador with us as well. Uh, head on over to osnap.com slash Jack O'Hara. That thing will light you up. All right. And, and and there's uh, there's a four different ones. There's the sleep one it's a melatonin flavor will put you out in 15 minutes if you're intentionally trying to go to sleep at night um, and then you got a few different flavors you have the reverse one as well as the dietary supplement with the green apple flavor um, all liquid vitamins all the purest form of energy that you could find yeah, yeah. Uh, you know i think they're trying to compete with obviously the bangs and the uh um uh, red bulls red bulls like what's what's uh monster monster i think there's one that i always have that has like zero sugar i don't know Oh man. I, mean, I used to be addicted to the white monsters and I had to give it up. And actually I did it through a, an NLP and, and hypnosis technique. And now I'll occasionally drink Red Bulls, but mostly I'm a coffee guy. Monster and Red Bulls were like the original where yeah, it's yeah. just like a shitload of sugar, a yeah, yeah, shitload yeah. of caffeine, right. shitload of, of chemicals. Celsius. I don't know why I couldn't think oh, of Celsius. I've, I've heard of them. Celsius is the one with zero sugar, but I'm sure it's kind of like Diet Coke where they right. have a ton of chemicals. Um, but uh, anywho, that's oh snap. This is Dom the Hypnosis. Hypnotist. Hi hypnotist. Dom yeah, the yeah. Hypnotist at Dom dot the dot hypnotist. On Instagram. On Instagram. YouTube, it's just Dom the Hypnotist. Everything's just Dom the Hypnotist. So. You may have heard of him. Uh, Joe Rogan talked about him. Brian Callen talked about him on The Kid and the Fighter. Yeah. Uh, ESPN as well. Uh, you you're really reshaping people's minds. And yeah. Forming them into the best versions of themselves, both I think spiritually, which is awesome, and then of course financially. I don't care what anybody says. It's like the more, the more money you have in your bank account, the more you're able to like get all of that stuff figured out. Right. Not from like an egotistical standpoint, because like people, especially I'm, I'm a Christian. I just got baptized, right? Oh, cool. So like money is associated with greed, right, and, you know, right, right. All of that stuff. Well, I'll tell you a very interesting story. Before we do that, I want to show the-, the Oh, listeners. that's right. So I gave you so, the gift of O-Snap. What's that? You, well, I we're going to do it at the end. So I have a gift in here for Jack. And I was telling him the reason <laughs> I got the unicorn is because my daughter loves unicorns. That's I knew right. you were going to keep the bag. So two for one here. So stay to the end and you're going to see, this is actually a really cool gift. You're going to love it. If you don't, that's okay too. The um, fact that you came with a gift at all is awesome, man. Well, I, I love giving gifts and, you know, so it's, it's, it's cool to, to do, you know, it makes people smile. Makes I, people I think good. that's my love language too. Cause every Christmas it's like, okay, I'm going to think of a thoughtful gift to get my friends, my family. Yeah, yeah. It's like always something creative. Well, you know what else uh, people love is not only getting gifts, but people like watching people open gifts. So, you know, that's why people will end up, they'll stay to the end because they're going to be like, what is it? I want to see it. And they want to see your reaction. So uh -huh. and it's always good. great with adults because you're always going to get a good reaction no matter what. I'm sure with your kids, sometimes it's just like, man, uh, I didn't want yeah, that. Whatever. It's like, then you're humbled a little bit. Right. Right. I remember when I was a kid, I would get, you know, you get like um, socks and underwear and I'd be like, damn grandma for real. But now those are my favorite gifts. I'm like, Psh. Socks, underwear, that's what I need. Oh, yeah, free clothes? Are yeah, you kidding me? Yeah. I, can, so. I can scratch that off the list of things I need to get. When yeah. you get new clothes, you feel like a new person. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I wanted to tell you something about the, um, uh, the financial thing, okay? Yeah. So this is a very interesting story. And I, I tell this to people all the time because it's, it's literally mind-blowing, okay? And so let me kind of backtrack and, I'll, and we'll, it'll lead into the whole money thing. So... It was the NFL season of 2021, and I had been working with one of my clients. We started off like around preseason and throughout the season. Now, this gentleman, he's like a you know fourth, fifth stringer, just kind of coming up as a second year. So, about halfway through the season, because of all the work we're doing, and obviously he's doing, you know, he's working hard himself. He finally got his opportunity 
for his first start. So what we would do is we'll meet together every Wednesday night and I would make him a hypnosis recording about whatever. So, you know, in football, every team they play, they got to remember the playbook, right? So defense got to do the offense, offense got to defense. So on this Wednesday night, he's like, Dom, this is my first, this is my first start. He goes, so if there's anything extra that we haven't done, if there's any other magic tricks you have, like now's the time to do it, right? So I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to make this recording. We're going to put the plays of the other team for you to memorize. But what I want you to do this time is I want you to loop it throughout the night. So it's a 30 minute recording. You're going to listen to it, what, eight hours, 16 times a night. So he did that and he listened to it Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, he went out and played. Well, after the game, he messaged me. He's like, dude, I have never been more in tune with what the other team was going to do in my entire career, not high school, college, nothing. And he said, it was like, I knew what they were going to do before they did it. And, you know, what's funny is, although up until that point, I had been in, in this you know, phase of my life and doing hypnosis for maybe two years, I think. Mm -hmm. I never really even believed in the whole sleep hypnosis thing. I was just like, how is it going to work? You know, you're asleep. How can you, you know, it doesn't make sense. Well, after that, I was like, well, there must be something to it. If he's saying that it worked for him, let me give it a shot. So it must've been a couple of weeks after that, I found this sleep hypnosis video on YouTube about creating abundance, right? So, um, about around money, right? So large sums of money come to me, all that cool stuff. So I, I, I went through the comment, this video had millions of views and I went through the comment, they're just thousands and thousands of comments and so many people saying, I was listening to this and I made 10 grand this week or this and that. And I was like, damn, this is, I, I wasn't really, I didn't know if I, I wasn't sure if I believed it, but there were just so many. So I'm like, all right, let me give this a shot, right? Yeah. So I started listening to the sleep hypnosis on a Tuesday. And by Sunday, we had our biggest week ever at the time by about 50%. And so I was like, oh shit, this works, right? Now that was great. We got 50% more clients, but the problem with 50% more client, at least at the time, it was just me and one other person on my team. Now we have a bigger team. I just can't handle 50% more people every single week, right? There's only one of me. So it was great, but I, I was like, you know what? I can't keep listening to this because if it's this way every week, I'm going to, I'm going to be slammed. So I stopped listening to it. Well, maybe a couple months after that, I decided, I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just create my own sleep hypnosis, but make it more around passive money and being able to make more money with the same amount of work or even less work, right? So not having large amounts of money and large amounts of work come at the yeah. same time. So. I created this recording and I gave it to clients and, and I put it on my Instagram and YouTube. And within a couple of days, people are like, dude, deals are closing out of nowhere that have been waiting forever. My appointment books or my, my scheduling's booking up and they were getting great results. Now I was having other people that were telling me that they couldn't understand the recording, that it was, it was corrupted or it sounded distorted. So I just figured like, you know, maybe something wrong with their phone or I don't know. So I just blew it off. Well, m a few months down the road, I really niched down on who the type of clients I want to work with, which are business owners and salespeople, simply because from, you know, at 16 years old, I started selling weed and I did that for a couple of years. And then I got into selling insurance. I did that for 12 years. So I'd always been in business and in sales. So that was like who I'm passionate about working with. So a few months later, I started giving the sleep hypnosis as like a homework assignment for all my clients. I say, hey, start listening to this every day for 30 days, that whole thing. And same thing happened. You know, people are like, dude, fucking, I'm getting money out of nowhere. I got a rate, all this stuff. Well, then I had a client who she texted me, it was like a Sunday, and she goes, Dom, I think uh I think something's wrong with the recording. And I said, uh, well, well, what's going on? She said, It's it sounds like it's in a different language. All of a sudden, I just can't understand it. And I said, you know. I've heard this before, screen record it, send it to me and I'll take a look. So she you know, sends it to me on my phone and I play it and can hear it perfectly fine. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, whatever. Well, about an hour later, she messages me and she goes, oh my God, Dom, I think I'm going crazy. And I said, what? And she goes, I just showed my partner this recording. We're in the same exact room and she can hear it perfectly fine, but I can't understand it. 
She's like, it sounds like it's in Latin. And I'm like, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? So I told her, okay, I didn't know what to do. So I said, hey, we'll, we'll talk about it next week on our session. So a week goes by and we jump on the call and, and I had to see for myself. So I share my Zoom with her and sure enough, I play the recording. I can hear it as clear as you can hear me right now. And she can't understand any of the words. It just sounds like, blah, 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 you know, whatever. So I didn't know what to do, but intuitively I said, okay, there must be some type of fear or some type of block that you're having around money that's causing your brain to distort it, right? So we sat down and we basically broke down each little part of the recording. So like each little affirmation. So we went through one by one and this is what we discovered. She had a fear that if she became successful, that she would lose her friends and family, right? That they would get jealous of her or whatever. She had a fear that if she became successful, she would be arrogant and cocky, right? She also had a fear that she would become successful, but she wouldn't be happy. So once we discover that, we go through, we clear everything out. And then 45 minutes later, I play the recording and she can hear it as clear as day. So pretty mind blowing. Now, since then, there's been, because now I have a team of people, other therapists that work for me and everything. And there's a lot of people that come to our program. And this is a part of the requirement. There's probably a hundred people who have had the same experience where they can hear it, then they can't, and then they can hear it again. So pretty, pretty fascinating stuff with the whole money thing you brought up. That is so fascinating because like when you say that, like just specifically for that, that recording, right? Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of people that understand it easily. There's hundreds of people that like, it's like mumble, mumbo jumbo to them. Yeah. Like there's people who sit in geometry class in high school, don't understand a damn thing. I was one of those kids, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like other people, it's like, oh, this is easy. Getting 95s to hundreds on every test where I'm getting like forties and I'm having to go see the principal because of my grades. Right. I'm thinking maybe there was just like a mental blockage there. It may may have not even have been like me just not being teachable. Right. Right. Maybe it was just like my fear of just, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to understand this. Yeah, Yeah. That's so bizarre to me because- how how many things do we interpret on a daily basis differently from other people? Just exactly. have different perspectives. Right, right. And these people flat out aren't even hearing it. They Can't think it's understand in a different a word. Language. Check this out. It's so crazy that I've literally had clients, like this one gentleman I'm thinking of in particular, he was, you know, had the thing and he's just mind blown. Like, what the fuck? I didn't think this would happen to me. So he shows his fiance the 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 video. He goes, What is this guy saying? He's like, Well, he's just speaking English. No, but what is he saying? Tell me what the words are. And he said, as she was looking at him dead in the eyes and she started saying what I was saying, repeating after me, it literally sounded like she, out of her own mouth was going, blah, 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 blah. Dude, it's mind boggling. A couple of weeks ago, so I do a group and I have a bunch of clients. We all jump on and we do mindset stuff, meditations, all this stuff, right? So a couple of weeks ago, one of my clients jumped on and she's like, Dom, I, I, I could hear the recording, then I couldn't. We cleared everything and then it came back. I don't know what's wrong. So, you know, I'm like, which part is it? And so I'm, I'm, and there's, you know, 50 people on the call and they're all listening to this. And I'm, I'm talking, I'm going, I'm reading the affirmation and she goes, oh, that's the part. I can't understand. What did you just say there? And I said, I forgot which part it was. And she's like, oh my God, I can't understand what you're saying right now. Like, it's just, the words aren't communicating. They're not calculating in my head. So within three, four, five minutes, we go through, do a little technique, clear it out. And then I say it again. And then she's like, oh, I can hear you fine again. <laughs> like, can you imagine that? Now this hasn't happened to me, but can you imagine being able to hear something perfectly clear? Imagine listening to this podcast, you hear it. And then all of a sudden it's like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. you would think you were like, going had a, nuts. Yeah, going she probably nuts. had a panic yeah. attack oh. when like, she's in the room with her friend. Oh, I hear this fine. And you're thinking like, oh my God, what's yeah. wrong with my brain? Exactly. Like I, I couldn't even comprehend going through something like that. Oh, that's yeah, why that's I, I that, that opens up my perspective to think that like, when you don't understand certain things in life, it's just like, there's just a mental blockage. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's like, you're just blind to it. Yeah. 100%. I couldn't imagine going through that. Just listen to something and thinking i can't even understand but yeah everyone else hears it fine yeah isn't that, isn't that I, like wild? i'm having a heart attack you know i've had Check people my pulse. in a room full of five six other people of their friends like hey guys can you understand this and everybody can hear it but except them so essentially what i theorize i mean there's no way to really prove it but a lot of people have a lot of fear around being successful what comes with it 
what you have to leave behind your old self, maybe old friends or whatever, and it scares people. And so when they start to create that momentum because they're listening to an affirmation and whatever you listen to, you're gonna end up creating in your reality. So it's like, it starts to come, it starts to come and their brain's like, no, 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 we're not ready for this. Slow down, slow down. So imagine imagine what else we're blocking out, right? Mm -hmm. Not only from our, our hearing, but our vision, seeing like, you know how people like, uh, you know, they'll, they'll like, oh, did you see the, da-da-da? like, no, I didn't see that. And it's like, well, maybe they just blocked it out because their mind didn't want to accept it. So very, yeah. very fascinating. Especially like in politics. Could you imagine if everybody oh, could understand that's, each exactly. other? Exactly. Right? So that's the thing that I brought up, you know, like with the whole COVID situation, some, you could show people videos and evidence and this and this and that, but they just could not accept it. Yeah. And it was just like, no, no. They were so in their own reality and their fear that it's like, no, this is how it is. This is how it is. And it's, it's just, it's the same thing. It's like their mind just won't yeah. allow it, you know? And it's crazy how like you've been, you said what, two years now really being focused in? Uh, with the business owners? Yeah. Uh, it's been about a little bit over a year. So I worked with a lot of business owners before, but now like this is what we do. I, my team, everybody, everything revolves around working with the business owners. And also I have the, this recording is also put onto a course called the Money Magnetism Program. And what it does is it has the sleep hypnosis, but it also has how, if you start having those blocks, it teaches you how to remove the blocks yourself. Yeah. So if people don't, you know, if maybe they can't work with me or whatever, like people can go through it and, and, and remove it. So that has been a little bit, actually, I think March of last year is when I first released the recording, but it wasn't until October when, I, oh man, you know what else is crazy? So when that happened, right? I told my group, I said, oh my God, the craziest thing happened this week, you know, blah, 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 I told yeah. the whole story. And, you know, other people were like, dude, same thing as me. I thought I was going crazy. So I released some things. Well, in one of my group sessions, I, I told everybody to create their own affirmation on what's called the Parrot app. So the Parrot app is an app where you can create an affirmation, you hit play and it'll just play indefinitely until your phone dies, basically. So I had people create their own affirmation, their own voice, their own words, and literally within a few days, people couldn't even understand their own words. Like, I don't remember what I said. I can't hear what is going on. It sounds like it's in a different language. So very, very uh, fascinating stuff. So. Man. And this is also something that you kind of fell into, you said. like Exactly. It's, it was almost like you were called to do it in a Th sense. That's you, exactly. You weren't chasing it. It wasn't something you were forcing. So that's no. why you probably understood it very easily. That, where other uh, people are kind of like forcing themselves to learn this stuff. And it's right. like, I don't understand. One of my clients, she called it being in your dharma. And I was like, what is that? And she goes, you are doing what your purpose is, what your soul purpose is on, on earth and everything. And that's kind of how I got into hypnotism in the first place is I wasn't looking for it. Just boom, it happened. And then with this, I kind of took it as a sign of like God being like, yo, you, I'm going to give this to you. And I need you to like spread this message because so many people have so many problems with money, right? Their health, the, the, the number two, the number one reason of suicide and divorce is what? money, right? So if I can help people clear that out, and here's the thing, it's not like just broke people are having these problems. I've had clients that are literally multimillionaires. You wouldn't think they would have blocks and they start listening to it. And it's like a certain part of it is distorted. So I just took it as like, Hey, I'm supposed to, this is part of my mission is to help people understand this and figure out how to clear these blocks so they can start creating abundance so that they don't have to have these problems mm -hmm. with money and everything and else. then they find out how easy it is to yeah make yeah money once they get past oh those yeah blocks. Dude, and you're like, had... it's not, it was not even a problem yeah yep it's like a governor right so in, in your car if you got your pedal to the metal it doesn't matter how how hard you put your pedal to the metal if there's a governor you're not going to go any faster and this is what happens with most people in their lives they work really hard 40 50 60 yeah you know people say oh people are lazy people are la not really most people are pretty fucking hard working you know they wake up and they take a half an hour to get ready drive an hour to work yeah. sit in traffic nine hours are there and like it's the discouragement of like you not really receiving that gratification for that hard work where yeah. they start to be you know what's the point of working hard exactly you know? well and then here's the thing if you're working really hard, but you have these limitations in your mind, again, just like the car, it doesn't matter how hard you work, you're not going to go any faster. Now, once you start to remove these barriers and these fears and the limiting beliefs, 
Now all that effort that you're putting in will actually go somewhere and you'll go faster and faster and faster and faster. So man, I've had people double, triple, quadruple, five X their income literally in four to six weeks after they remove this shit, like boom, go from making six, seven grand a month to 40 grand a month. I had a guy, he was, he did like 300,000 in his business in 2021 in solar. Now that's sales. So probably yours did like 50 K or something. And now he's doing half a million dollar months, half a million dollar months in one year of clearing all this shit out. That's like 20 times what he was making before. Mm -hmm. So it's, it just goes to show the power of your mind and how these things, and this, look, it's not just money, it's relationships, right? Oh, it's people, everything, yeah. It's literally everything. So. Just like the art of communicating with people, especially mm -hmm. people you care about, like mm -hmm. specifically relationships. Oh, yeah. Going through like tough periods, like you're just stuck in the mud with your partner. It's like, how are we going to get out of this? Like, yeah, we, yeah. Need to, we need to understand how each other are feeling. Right. It's like, how do we do that unless we actually like sit down and understand and have someone like you who can like go right, through that right. and actually kind of almost brainwash their brain to think like, oh, that part of it was opened up. Right, You know, right. like drug addicts will tell you like acid will like open up your brain to like a, a totally different element, right? Right, and You right. can see certain things, not that that's the perfect example for right, it, right. but I'm just off the no, top of my head, saying, it's yeah. like you're able to open up a different part of their brain to yeah. think, I've never thought this way before. And now you have feelings you've never felt before and everything just becomes a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. That's You're removing those filters and then life becomes so much better when you, especially the, now a lot of people believe they're not good enough. They don't deserve success. They don't deserve love that, you know, there's so many things. And then what ends up happening is they, they kind of live this groundhog day scenario over yeah. and over, right? It's like the guy that attracts women in his life to cheat on him every time. And then he begins to believe that every woman is like that. And it's not true. It's just in, in, somewhere in his mind, he created this belief in, around whatever that may be. And so therefore the women that are in his reality are that way, but it's just not the the, the truth. And yeah. then vice versa for women and people um, people attracting, you know, these just insane scenarios. So yeah, man, it's a, uh, I really love what I do. And it's, it's, it's when you can help people like remove these barriers, it's just, it's mm -hmm. paradigm shifting. Their life becomes different forever, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's just the difference of like working a nine to five and going home, sitting on the lazy boy and living that day, day after day after mm -hmm. day after day to doing what you do and articulating it as well as you can. I just feel oh, like the you. passion in your voice, yeah, right? Because yeah, yeah. you're just like, oh, I remember this story and that story and that example, you know? And then you tie everything together. It's like, yeah. oh, you love what you do and you're going to make an abundance from a financial standpoint because of it. And right. you're not even like, that's not even the main goal. Right, like right, at this right. point, you're just looking to help people and like the satisfaction of that. And that, that has resulted in yeah. income, not only for you, but for your clientele, which right, is a win-win right. for everybody. Well, it's funny because when I got into hypnosis, it was complete by accident. My mom bought me a, a gift 2018 for Christmas. Here's a three-day course to learn hypnosis. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, I'll go to it. I'm, I didn't have any like, desire to do this for a living. I thought I'll learn a cool party trick or something, whatever. And I went to the course and in those three days, man, I just had such a shift in who I was so fast that I could literally feel myself. Like I, I just was different. Yeah. And uh, when I got out of the course on a Monday, I decided this is what, like many people, I, I, was, I was really good at selling insurance, but I just hated it. And I just did it for money. I was just like, okay, I'm, I started doing it when I was 18. I didn't know anything different. That's all I believed I could do. But when I found this, I was like, this is what I was, this is what I was put on the earth to do is to help people feel the way I feel right now, help them change mm -hmm. these programs. And basically I had set a goal initially. I said, six months, I want to transition over from doing insurance to doing hypnosis. I want to do this full time. I don't even need to make the same amount of money. If I could just pay my bills, I'll be happy with that. Cause I'd rather do something that I really enjoy. The money will come later. Well, with the first week I went out, I worked with like 50 people or 45 people all for free. Cause I had no belief that I could even charge a dollar. Yeah. So I started offering all these free sessions and within a week, my confidence grew. I'm like, oh shit, I'm actually pretty good at this. Okay. And suddenly within a week, my goal from six months got cut down to three and I went out and worked with, you know, within those two weeks, I worked with a hundred people and I literally two weeks of the day, I woke up, I had a full day of I had 10 appointments to sell insurance and I just could not physically get my body to 
go to work. I just like, I was done. So I messaged my assistant. I said, Hey, call everybody, tell them I'm not coming in today. And I said, that's it. I'm never selling another insurance policy ever again in my life. And I said, I'm done. And for the first 10, 12 months, I took a 75% pay cut. You know what I mean? Like I was barely making Your mind's it. free. Yeah, you, that's why I didn't get, you know, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm gonna make hundreds of thousands of dollars every month doing hypnosis. And I was like, I'm so sick of doing this thing. I There's more to me that I know I'm meant for more. And then I found it. So yeah, it's um, it's been a great, it's been a great ride. You know, it's funny you mentioned like, oh, I can hear the passion of your voice. Yesterday, I jump on a I jump on a call at eight o'clock with my team. We do a little sales meeting, get them all hyped up. Boom. By nine o'clock, I jump on with this guy and you know, he's crushing it. He's like, dude, I'm about to hit my first six figure month. Da, 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 da. And he goes, but dude, I've been I've been getting sick like every couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on. Out of nowhere, this whole thing. Da, da, da. And there's a lot, we won't go too deep into it, but there's a lot that I've learned over the years about that kind of stuff. And mm, mm, the majority of the time it's psychosomatic. It's something going on in your mind that's creating this illness, this sickness or whatever. So long story short, what we found out is that he started growing in his business so fast that he didn't want to do certain tasks. He's like, I don't want to do this. I just want to do this part, but he was kind of forced to do it. So deep down subconsciously, we went back into when he was a kid and he goes, dude, when I was a kid, I used to, uh, when I would go to school, I would purposely get sick because I wanted to go home and stay with my mom. And he's like, I would be at home or I'd be at school. I would get sick. He's like, as soon as I found out I was going home, I would be relieved. And, and um, we're relating it to what's going on now. And he goes, oh, dude, I think I'm getting sick as, a, as an excuse to not have to do the work, right? Yeah. So we clear it out and the guy feels fucking 10 times better. He's like, holy shit, that was crazy. That was my nine o'clock. Then my 10 o'clock is a guy who can't hear the recording, right? He's, he's blocked. So we go through, we clear it out. Boom, his paradigm is like the first guy paradigm shifted. Oh, I'm making myself sick. It's not from like some germs or something. His whole reality has changed forever. The second guy, we clear out his blocks around the money. He can hear the recording again. Boom, his brain is shifted forever. The third guy I jumped on a call with, he had, so, he had a belief that he wasn't good enough and he would sabotage. Once he would hit a certain level of success, he would sabotage it because he had this weird connection with his dad where if he if he wasn't succeeding as much as he would his dad would like give him attention and and we cleared that out and you know the guy fucking cried and was like holy shit dude and it's just that's what i get to do all day just blow people's minds it's it's crazy oh my god dude. <laughs> yeah it's like fun. that's the dream it yeah, really yeah. is it, it is man it is i and mean I, i've had multiple experiences where I left jobs, you know, like you put in your two weeks and mm -hmm. I'm driving home and I just have a smile on my face. I'm not even trying, I'm not even thinking about smiling. It's just there. Right, right, and I'm right. like, oh my God, I'm free. I don't have to do this anymore. Yeah, I don't yeah. have to wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow and do that because then you you go after your goals and you right. make it work. Well, that's like why you said, you're doing what you're doing here. You, you, at, the beginning, your at the beginning, you gave up who, how much money, you know, but it's yeah, like, right. I'm going to build what I want to do, what I feel like is my calling, what I'm going to do. Right, and in the right. long run, it all works out. Yeah. I was making like $150,000 or more than that, like 160, 70. And at the time it seemed like a lot of money. And I went down to making- People will tell you that's grand. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Ooh. but yeah. And I, I was like scraping by. In, in December of 2019, I made $1,600. So that goes to show you. Yeah. <laughs> I so. mean, it's where you have to start out. My, yeah, yeah. my first year doing this, well, the first three years I did it in college, I wasn't even thinking money. So like, I didn't even think the yeah. monetization side of it. And then the first year out of college, I had one sponsorship that was paying me like three grand a month. Oh, and that, nice. that kept me going. Like yeah. my rent was like 400 bucks. I'm like, I, I could, I could make this work. Yeah, I'm like yeah. three grand. I'm living. That's a, man. that's a lot when you're, I know I'm, when you go from like making a few hundred bucks every month right. to working odd jobs, a few thousand bucks. And then you think like, okay, I got bills to pay. I got to right. pay for groceries. If I want to invest in all these projects, I got to make a little bit more right. and you learn as you go. But like, I've been fortunate enough to do this out of school just because I just knew this is what I wanted to do. When I was five years old, I'm like, this is what I want to do. I'll make it work no matter what. Yeah. You know, it wasn't about the money for me. Once you get a little bit older, like if you want to do it full time, it's got to be about the money and the pressure kind of right. dictates. It's but then you got to totally. remember, it's like, if you're good at this, it's going to happen. In yeah, the long yeah. term. You just got to stick with it. Well, I had a, a conversation yesterday with my business coach. We we're talking about expanding and, and it has come, it, you know, it is a business now in a sense, but I, I just told him, I said, look, dude, I'm not one of these guys that wants to do this to sell it, right? Yeah. To sell a business. And I go, 
this is not a business for me. This is my fucking life. Mm -hmm. Like this is my entire existence is what I do. So I can't sell that. I don't want to sell that. I mean, I'm sure I could figure out a way to do it, but like, this is my purpose until the day I die is doing some form of what I do now. So I just, you know, it was like, it's different. You know, there's those business guys, they, they want to buy a business, they want to flip it, they want to make a bunch of money. Cool. I'm just like so engulfed in what I do. It's just, it's not a business to me. It's just, it's just who I am. It's in my DNA. You know what I'm saying? Well, so. you'll see the people that make the most money and the most influential people are the people who aren't trying to sell you on anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you're, you're not trying to scheme anybody. It's like, this works. Like I want to help yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like there are empires around them of people that buy into what they're doing. Exactly. They're all making great money too because they're, they're actually feeling that positive energy. Right. And it's not like, oh, he's not scamming me. He's not a slimy businessman. Like right. he legitimately wants us to feel the way we feel. Right. You know, you see it with like the Ed Milets of the world, right? Exactly. It's like you, you feel it when he talks he yeah, wants yeah. everyone around him to succeed right. it's not about selling people on all of his stuff yeah it's funny because all the people that work for me now were all clients at one point and you know some of some of the you know a couple of them were in dark places where i didn't know when i started working with them but they were literally i mean one girl works for me she told me after we had worked uh, she goes hey i didn't i didn't tell you this but before we started working together i rented a hotel I wrote a suicide note. I had a bottle of pills and I was just done. You know, I was just done. And, you know, she had cancer going on, ulcers, you know, drama with her ex, child, like just everything. And she was just about to quit and, um, and she didn't. And so what, to your point, you know, when you help people like that, they buy into what we're doing and they, and then they transfer that, that excitement to other people like, yo, this stuff works because this is where I was and this is where I'm at now. So if it can work for me, you know, it can work for you type of thing. So yeah, man, it's, um, it's very, very fascinating and, and it's, uh, it's exciting. It's really exciting. And now what I'm transitioning into doing is doing more speaking engagements. So actually yeah. August 18th, 19th, 20th, I rented out a room at the Circa hotel, which for anybody who hasn't been to Vegas is like the nicest hotel in downtown. Yeah. It's brand new. And so That's now what makes it the nicest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like the, <clears throat> the, the conference room I went, in, I'm like, Oh my God, this is the nicest conference room that I've been to for seminars. I'm sure there might be better ones, but I go to seminars all the time. Like this thing is clean, it's pristine. And so now I'm at the point where I'm going to do these, you know, big speaking engagements, but also it's not just me talking the whole time. It's interacting, teaching people how to go through their own minds and like control themselves. And so it's, it's, it's really fun. And, and then my team is kind of handling the one-on-ones. I still take some one-on-one -on -one clients here and there, not as many as I did before, but yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's fun. It's growing and it's exciting. I, I feel the next phase for me is to do stage, like be on stage and doing one to many instead of one to yeah. one, you know, and once you do that consistently, that's easy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you're just speaking to an audience, you're retelling your story. Yeah, exactly. You know, feeling the mix of emotions. You know, I talk about this with like comedians, public speakers, obviously, where mm -hmm. it's like, you got to be a little bit comedic, a little bit, yeah, yeah. you know, spiritual, really get people to like start crying a little bit. Like, uh -huh. oh my God, that was a deep personal story. And then you bring it full circle. Right. And it's like, that's your message to people. And that's how you inspire people. And that's how people reach out to you and be like, Hey, I really need your help. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure like you don't do as much one-on-one -on -one stuff anymore, but if there's a certain person where you feel like, Oh, I could help them. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. It, it would mean the world to me if I could really flip their mindset, complete 180. Yeah, 100%. Because like you just see the potential in people. Yeah, I'll jump on a, like I had a client the other day, he worked with one of my other therapists and he was just going through some shit and he messaged me on Facebook. I said, all right, I was at a break. I went to the seminar and I had a 15 minute break. I was like, yo, answer your phone. And I call him and we went through this whole thing. And in five minutes, like what this weird thing that he was holding on to is just gone. He's, you could just hear it in his voice and his, He's like, oh my God, thank you so. And that guy's life in five minutes changes life forever. You know, see you later. Like he's 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 crushing it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, it's um, it's a very rewarding, rewarding career. You know, another thing is I'm also a shaman, not a shaman in the sense of like ayahuasca right. and going to the woods, but in uh, so Native American have Native Americans depending on the tribe and everything, they have different modalities of spiritual healing and different things that you can learn and, and, and things like that. And that's another piece of what I really enjoy. Like that stuff, the spiritual side, the things that we are capable of and, and that we're not 
we're, we're led to believe is not possible and all these things. That's what I really, really love. Like that's the stuff that gets me excited. Yeah. So and not everybody's always- there yet. You know, like people just mentally can't, are just not there. You know, some people are and, it, and it's good. And some people like myself, a couple of years ago, you would have told me some of the things that I've experienced and know now I'd have been like, you're, you're yeah. stupid. You're crazy. What are well, you talking about? You know? there's the people that want to learn more. And those people are the ones that are going to learn more and want to experience right. things like that and open themselves up to being uncomfortable and vulnerable in situations like that to accomplish new things and grow in certain right. aspects of their lives where people who are raised to just know like certain things are like, no, this is, this is the way you live life. Right. You know, and some people aren't able to break through that barrier. So what got you to, uh, you said you just got baptized or something? I did. And what, what brought you to that? Completely? Well, I mean- I was raised Catholic in Mm -hmm. the sense that like everyone in my family was raised Catholic. We never went to church. Like Mm -hmm. it was never a big thing. We went to Sunday school, but then we never went to church. It was like looking back at it and I'm like, we kind of half-assed that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But coming out here, so grew up in Jersey, 18 years. Christianity's not really as exposed on the East Coast. It's not as oh, really? prevalent. I mean, I'm sure, and there's people who I know who are Christian back there. They're like, well, maybe you weren't, but like right. we went to Christian church. It's just not as big. Oh, We're on okay. the West Coast. It's huge, you know? Mm. It's way more prevalent out here. So when I got to Phoenix, I went to Grand Canyon University in, in college when I turned 18. Christian school, it's not the reason why I went. I went because of palm trees, baseball. They have the Cactus League out there, huge baseball fan warm weather all year round, (laughs) everything, right? Um, The main event right there, the kind of coup de grace. But as the years went on, like the people I was associating myself with all went to church on some days. They were all raised Christian, you know? Mm -hmm. Some of them were awesome about it. They're like, you do you. Some of them were kind of judgmental and that kind of turns a lot of people off when it comes to Christianity. And it turned me off a little bit Oh, I did it all the time. Because I had friends who weren't as invested into it, who became invested into it throughout college. And I'm like, who are you? Like, don't try to force this stuff on me. And then, you know, two of my best friends found a church every Sunday. I'm like, all right, they started dragging me along. I'm like, I'll go for the community. Right. Here we are like three years later. I go every Sunday. I'm involved in the church, you know, involved in the community groups. You know, you're, if anything else, you're surrounded by, because I'm a guy, I love talking to people, right? Yeah, I, yeah. We love having open dialogue and conversation right. where some people, if you don't see them for three months, you're like, hey, how's everything going? They're like, eh, nothing much. I'm like, really? After three months, it's not like nothing much. Right, like, nothing's right, changed right. your life. Like, I want to talk to you, you know? Yeah. We're like in these community groups, I mean, everybody's open. Everybody's like, what's going on in your life? You know, right. what are you struggling in right now? Well, what's, what's making you happy right, right now? And you're, you have that fulfilling, deep conversation with everybody. Uh, which is what really turned me on to it. You know, you find the right pastor, you find the right community. Right. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, I am opened up to this. I am like, this is starting to make sense. It didn't make sense to me forever. Right. You know, right. and I'm not going to be, I'm not one of those Christians that's just going to be like, oh, you, you got to, you got to yeah, come to yeah. the church. I'm not that guy. I'm yeah. cool. I promise. <laughs> but, and I'm from the East Coast too. So like, I curse casually all the time too. Yeah. Or some people are like, Jack, just tone it down a little bit. Right. right but right. like, that's who I am. Uh, but I have like really, you know, fallen deep into it to the point where I was like, I got baptized as when I was like six months old, you know, in the Catholic church. Cause it's what you do. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, I want to do it. Cause my church does it on Easter Sunday every year. And mm-hmm. it's such a, like a fulfilling thing to watch people go through. I'm like, I'm going to do it this year. And I was able to do that. Um, got, uh, baptized by our pastor at our local church and, you know, all of my closest friends who are a part of that community were there for me. Like I have a buddy who uh, went into the Air Force last year, flew out for the weekend just, you know, to hang out and be a part of it. And mm-hmm. it was it's just a really cool, tight knit community of brothers and sisters that I was able um, to do it. But it wasn't by like how you got into this. It wasn't, I didn't force it. You know, I didn't, it I didn't even there. like it. I didn't even yeah. like it. And then all of a sudden it just something flipped. Yeah. 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 You can't explain that stuff. Totally. It just right place. Right. It just happens when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Like if you told me when I was five, five, 10 years old, I always wanted to get into this, but I was an insane introvert. Mm -hmm. When I got home from school, how's school, Jack? Good. You want to talk about it? No, straight up. You know, I didn't say anything. Like if you told my parents I'd be doing this, just rambling about my life, they'd be like, you're crazy. That kid doesn't talk at all. And then all of a sudden, the more I got into this, like if you look back at the first episode, yeah, my social skills weren't that great. Here we are 695 episodes later or whatever. It's like, 
now right. I know what I'm doing. You yeah, know? Yeah, it, yeah. It's easy to talk about what I'm passionate about and it, and it comes down. It's cool to like talk about that with people who are just as passionate about what they do, yeah, yeah. you know, cause you're actually able to feed off of those vibrations. Right. But that's well, it's, when you, when you did the intro with the commercial, I was like, damn, this guy's good. You know, most uh -huh. people have to read the freaking teleprompter yeah. or whatever. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, sometimes I'm good. Sometimes my mind goes blank. Like yesterday at Blue Wire, I had a few, like I had a uh, Sean Merriman who is a linebacker yeah, for the yeah. Chargers mm -hmm. and I'm reading down his resume and I'm forgetting. So I like look down at the phone. I'm like, all right, uh, cut to the wide shot. We'll pull, we'll pull up a picture or something. I'm like, yep. Linebacker, uh, MMA enthusiast, you know, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Sometimes you just brain fart, especially yeah, no, when you 100%. have like six, seven guests in a day. Oh, I bet. Oh, you've done that. Right. You've done six, seven in a day. I did that yesterday. Oh, yeah. Nice. I had like six hours booked, just back to back to back yeah, to back yeah, to yeah. back. I trying to feeling. trying to wrap up interviews while the next guest is coming in. Like right. the one with Sean yesterday went like 30 minutes over. Oh, shoot. And I'm thinking, like, this is such a great conversation, Sean. Like, I hate the fact that I have to wrap this up, but I could see my guest just like pacing in the waiting room. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I gotta get to him. But that's funny. I mean, this is what I love to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's same, dude. I've had times at one point I would do 10, I've done 12 sessions in a day, which is not healthy. I don't recommend no. it because you're dealing with a lot of energetic things and everything. But, uh, but uh, it just, the excitement keeps you going. And you're just like, all right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. When you're, it's fulfilling when it's working out for people too. Yeah, it's when, yeah. the, when your clientele doesn't quite get it. They're like, I'm not really succeeding. I don't understand why I'm investing into this. Right. Like, right. You keep telling me like to, do this and that and it's like it's not working that's yeah. when it gets frustrating yeah, yeah but part 100%. of you is probably like okay this is the challenge well I and then i this. you know it's funny the other day we had like a twenty thousand dollar sales day right probably our second or third biggest day and it was like you know i look at my phone i'm like oh cool you know it felt good i guess and that same day i had a client tell me dude I went from making $8,000 a month in sales and literally within a month, he's now doing $100,000 in sales. So the same day this happens and when I get that text message, I'm like, holy, I'm fucking excited. I go on my Instagram, I start telling everybody, this guy just went from eight, that's like 12 times what he's making. Yeah. You know, and, and the excitement from the result is way more exciting than the money. Like, it, don't get me wrong, it feels good to make money. But that uh, when you get that result with people and there are occasionally where people, you know, you get that little bit of resistance. I always know just I've done it thousands and thousands of times now. I always know that it's going to work out. It's just that little bit of resistance. And then what's going to end up happening is this will be a story that I tell later on mm -hmm. about like, oh, this is where this where we were kind of getting stuck. And then boom. And a lot of times those people are the best breakthroughs. You know, when they come in, it's like, oh, I'm fine. Uh, uh. Cause it's so, whatever it is that they're dealing with is so ingrained that when you're able to finally break through it, it's just like this huge, you know, almost like a, like an orgasm. It's yeah. like, finally, I it's can like everything is just shooting out. Yeah, it's like yeah. with like the, uh, like the, uh, um, not toilet paper, but like just confetti. Yeah. Yeah. Or like paper towels. If it's stuck in the bathroom and you're like pushing, and, and then all of a sudden everything's working right and, and it just shoots yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's unbelievable too, because it's like the more people that have those experiences with you the more you're just going to get referred like did mm -hmm. you hear about dom like right right wh who who talked about you on rogan because uh, i was khalil roundtree because when when you get that type of exposure yeah, like, yeah number yeah. one show in the world like everybody's like oh who's he talking about right right, right? yeah no it's um and what's funny is that happened really fast like from when i got out of the out of the course i want to say six weeks later that had happened and it was one of those things where right place right time I, my buddy, I hit up my buddy. I was like, yo, can you help me go get this couch on the other side of town? And he had a truck and he's like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. We went to go do it. It took so long. He's like, yo, I got to meet uh, Julian at the performance Institute. You want to go have lunch? I'm like, sure. So we go there, we eat. And then we ran into Khalil, you know, we exchanged information and then he was a week out from his fight. And then he ended up doing so well in that fight. As funny, I, I was watching it. I watched every ufc card i mean definitely pay-per-view i'll watch most of their fight nights so i'm a huge fan and you know joe rogan's like oh my god it's like he got over a mental block like this is a completely different fighter than we've ever seen i'm like holy shit dude i like had something to do yeah. with that this is weird you know and then yeah and then he gave me a shout out and it was funny is the guy that he beat was listening to him eric anders and eric hit me up he's like yo whatever you did because like he Khalil beat the shit yeah. out of him. It was brutal. Did you watch that fight? I did. Okay, so know, you know what I'm exactly talking about. Yeah, talking about, <laughs> it was yeah. like 20, it was like 30, 25 or 30, yeah. 20. It was, it was like two 10, eight rounds. 
And um, so he hit me up. He's like, yo, whatever you did to him, you need to do with me. Well, he was on a three fight losing streak and he had a fight coming up in like two months after that. If he loses his fight, he's out of the UFC. You know, he loses all the money, the sponsor, you know, the whole thing. And so we had worked together and he went out and he knocked out his opponent in like a minute and 19 seconds, got a $50,000 bonus, saved his job, right? So I just got a lot of credibility and momentum just right out the gate. Just because think about it, right? Who knows? Maybe it would have happened if, if I didn't kind of enter those people's lives. But, you know, when you see that big of a difference in that short amount of time, it, it's got to be something different that they did. Right. And it's just when you see it that way, it just it is. Yeah, it's funny. I didn't even know what I was really doing, to be honest. Like, I, I mean, it's I was working. six yeah. weeks out of the damn course I just went to. I don't know. what I was just what it was is it was my excitement and my enthusiasm and my passion that made it work. You know, it's not about like what you say or who the person is, like how that energy feels. And when you can, when people feel that, like, whoa, this guy's, this guy's like really excited. Okay. Whatever he says must be truth. So when you're doing hypnosis, like it's all about their mind accepting the suggestion. And when I'm so certain about what I'm doing, it has an effect on people. You know what I mean? So, and then, you know, everything just kind of went from there. So yeah, it's, um, it's a, it's it's been fun, man. It's been it's been good. It's hilarious that he came after after getting his ass kicked, just being like, yeah. "I wasn't expecting this at all." What right. what, what worked for him? Yeah, I want to yeah. work with you now. Isn't that funny? I was like, "Oh wow, that's a that's a trip." It's a smart thing to do, though. You know, I would do it if I was him. So, so besides public speaking and doing that moving forward, what's kind of like your big goal moving forward with this? Yeah, now so kind of like out in the open. Yeah, so I have I have a couple of hypnotherapists that work for me. And I have other, other, there's about 10 of us total. And then I have another team that does all my marketing and everything. So there's, you know, there's like 20 people involved in the whole operation. And so right now it's, you know, we, we bring people in, we do one-on-ones with them. Uh, so I, I have a four pronged approach, right? And this is why I don't like to sound arrogant, but this is, I know that I'm the Best, I, don't, I, I, don't, I want to say one of the best, but I really want to say the best at what I do specifically to what I do, because obviously the track record that I have just working with thousands of people, just the results, it's just right. every time I get a person, I'm just like, I know that I'm going to change this person's life. There's no, I was just talking about yesterday. People go, do you think this is going to work? I'm like, no, I don't think this is going to work. I know this is going to yeah. work. And the only way I have that conviction is just because of just so much, so much uh, time and, and the results, but um, we have a four pronged approach, right? So we have the one on ones, which are really important because you got to have that one on one interaction. Because you know, listening to a seminar is great; you're getting a lot of breakthroughs through that. But some people just need that initial one on one. Then we have a group that I do every week just to keep people's mindset in the right in the right direction, right? It's almost like, you know, you mentioned go to church. It's kind of like that. Obviously, I'm not a church or, yeah. you know, anything like that. But it's just, you get that hour a week of live interaction, you know, motivation, inspiration. Then we have the online program. And then now every client that comes on gets a free ticket to my event. So it's like, there's a four-pronged approach. They get everything all involved. So, you know, you go to another hypnotist, maybe they only do one-on-ones. You'll still get results. However, it's a whole different thing when you just got every single, you know, that's how I know that people get results. Like if you don't get results, that, that doesn't even make sense because yeah. you have so many opportunities to make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like if, if it's not working, it's you. It's, yeah. mental, it's either a mental blockage. It's you're like not some, you're not doing the work. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is because there's no, no stone is left unturned. Like we're hitting every single possible angle and, and people get amazing results. We, my, my hypnotherapy, the people that work for me, they just, yeah, they, people get their, their mind, their lives are completely changed. I mean, imagine, imagine that next month you are making four times the amount of money you're making right now. How would that change your life? Like it, it's everything pretty, flips, dude. everything flips. Like you said, the number one cause of suicide, divorce, just overall stress comes yeah. financially for people that associate money with greed, like wake up a little bit. Oh, dude. You know, yeah. there is an abundance of money. There's never, gonna, the world's never going to run out of money. No, it's, it's never going to run out of currency. There for the taking, so like, you could have as much as you want. Yeah. It's just about wanting it and kind of separating that belief that you're just like a greedy asshole if you have a lot of money. Yeah, no, 100%. And honestly, like 
does everybody that comes to the program double, triple, quadruple their income in a month? No. no. But I will say this, can't put a price tag on peace of mind. You yep. know what I mean? Like that relationship you're still feeling hurt about from five, 10 years ago that you haven't got over or the anger or resentment you feel towards your brother, your mom, your dad, your this, your that. You know, people that are violated when they're children, if you know what I mean, like all those things still affect us. So forget about making more money. Imagine having all that not affect you anymore. Like your entire life, the way I describe it is people are walking around. We mentioned the 40 pound vest earlier, right? Yeah. People are walking around with this backpack and it's just filled with boulders. And all these boulders are all the things that they've gone through in their lives that are keeping them stuck. And they're trying to go from here to here, but they have a hundred pound backpack on. You might get there or you might die trying to get there. Or if you do, it's going to take you 10 times longer. So let's just empty the backpack out, let go of all the shit from your past so you can get from where, you, where you're where you at to where you want to be in a fraction of the time. So mm -hmm. you're only here for a short while, you know, you can't waste it on yeah. what already happened in yeah. your life. If you, you had gone through it. those experiences, yeah. right? It already happened. You can't change it. Yeah. 100%. Why are you letting it affect and, and fizzle out into your future actions? Yeah. So many people do that. So yeah, man, it's uh, powerful. So so I appreciate you. We're going to have yeah, to do this again at Blue let's, Wire uh, let's too. Let's open up this gift. Let's see what this present is with the unicorn uh, gift wrapping so paper. Let's see. Man. Go, my friend. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me get my phone out. Yeah, literally yesterday, I had a guest give me their book. They gave me a hat, a t-shirt. I'm like, I need to start making some merch or something to give to people. You know? All right. The content's great and the conversation's great, but I'm like, I have to do this. Yeah, look at this. So we're live on the podcast right now here in Vegas. Uh, unicorn, horsey, uh, girl dad, wrapping paper. I wonder what this is because I remember you asking me what my shoe size was uh, a while back as well. It's like wrapping paper within wrapping paper with the box, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give this back to you to reuse for Christmas or, you know, the girl's birthdays. And then oh, here we go. Down, upside down. Wow. Oh my God, dude. Are you serious? Look yeah. at this. We got some Osho flip flops in the house. This is like the greatest gift I've received ever on this show, dude. How did you make these? So I didn't make them. One of my best friends, he owns the, uh, it's a company called Toehold. Toe so Hold. they make the highest quality flip-flop. That's the highest quality leather you can find on the planet. They also do a Look bunch of, they do like elephant, like when elephants get old and die, they have to do something with their body parts, right? So uh, they do elephant, stingray, shark, all these crazy things. So he's actually right out of here in Vegas he's he's uh he was partners with callen brian callen for a while he's got and that flip-flop sponsor yeah you've yeah. seen it right and um, oh my god he rogan said they're the best flip-flops he's ever worn so yeah i had these uh these are pretty cool huh dude these are amazing thank Try you them on. so or much you, you got shoes on i huh? got my yeah, jordans okay. on here's the thing and my, all of my closest friends are going to be laughing hysterically at this because again this is the greatest gift i've ever received on this show i got my own custom flip-flops I don't wear flip flops. I, I always oh, tell don't? them, I'm like, I'm not an open toe shoe guy, but I'm yeah. like, I have my own flip flops yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So now I can go on the beach comfortable. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome, man. This I'm is amazing. Like this is incredible. Like, that look cool? at that. I hope the Baltimore Orioles don't find me for the logo on the flip flops. You know, this is, this is incredible, man. Awesome. What a I'm great like way. It. I'm going to wear these when we do our next episode. Next well, time I'm going to tell Because I was like, because not everybody wears flip flops, like you said. And I was like, uh, well, I was like, he's from, or he lived in Phoenix. He's got to be where, like, I can't, and he lives in Vegas. I'm like, it's so hot here. I would imagine wear flip flops, but I figured if he, if you didn't wear them, you could at least put them in like a, a little case now. or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Just in, in the studio, hold them up. Yeah. Now, whenever I go to the beach, I, whenever I visit home in Jersey, Jersey Shore. Yeah. Those are the best. There's, they're the most expensive, the best, highest quality handmade. There's like 550 steps that go into them all like in the MMA world all the top people rep them tim kennedy rogan cal like just the who's who that this is the brand that they use so hey well thank you so much yeah for man these. thanks yeah. so much for coming Glad on the you show liked it. we got a lot a lot of great nuggets that yeah. people are going to take a lot of value away from and this is the first of many shows i hope because yeah, i got yeah. a lot more i want to talk to you yeah about. yeah well um, we got we can go deep but this was episode uh, 695 of the podcast, guys. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe over at our YouTube channel at Jack O'Hara TV. Uh, the Osho flip-flops. Never thought I'd have these. By the uh, way, I don't get paid. I'm, this isn't like an endorsement no, or anything. No, I no, just... It could be moving forward, man. Yeah, right? Anybody that wants custom-made flip-flops. <laughs> right. Uh, but we can follow you at dom.the.hypnosis on Instagram. 
Hypnotist. Hypnotist. I'm always going to get that mm-hmm. wrong. Dom the Hypnotist. Uh, and th- this was episode 695 of the podcast, guys. We're also brought to you by Osnap. Head on over to osnap.com slash Jack O'Hara to get your free product today.